Hi, Bill Schoenberg here, Fast Pitch Power. Uh, tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about acceleration. Uh, we're going to focus on upper body acceleration because in my last video post, if you recall, and for those of you who don't, I'll show you real quickly, we talked about lower body, stride, glide, and drive, which is coming off of the pitching rubber in an explosive fashion out toward your target, gliding and driving through. T toe and knee in a forward power position, and I will show you what that looks like. Load, reach, track, fire, and drive. Now, tonight, I want to talk to you about more of the upper body than the lower body. When we use the word resistance in just about anything, it sort of has a negative connotation. Resistance is, generally speaking, the fighting against what wants to happen naturally. But in windmill pitching, when you go to create a firm front side, or a wall of resistance as we call it, coming off the pitching rubber, here, that wall of resistance, that kind of resistance is good. But when you're delivering the pitch, your arms need to be completely and totally relaxed. And want to build velocity from the top down. Now, what do I mean by that? Anybody who's been on a dragon coaster, you know that when the dragon coaster is going up to the top, it's being pulled by a chain, and then when it gets to the top, it builds velocity. So a very good drill that I like to do when my pitchers are getting ready to go through their warm-ups, getting ready to pitch, is what I call the G-flop drill, and I'll explain that in a moment. But what I want you to do is I want you to put your hands up to the side this way, elbows down, shoulders relaxed and as soon as you feel that your shoulders are relaxed and your arms are in a stable position you'll notice that they are at zero velocity they're not moving from this point you're just going to relax and let your hands flop you're going to do it again relax flop now you'll notice from this point zero velocity to this point when i hit my sides there's a tremendous amount of speed that's built up the next portion of this warm-up drill is to take your hand to the top, which is where the delivery of your pitch begins. Keep your hand on the frontal plane. Don't allow your pitching hand now to hit your side. Comes down at the same speed as your glove hand, and now flops forward. Now, 80 to 85 percent of the velocity that I am able to obtain by doing this is coming from what? Does anybody know? I'll give you a hint. It's something that has an impact on every part of your body, but isn't part of your body. If any of you said gravity, you're right. So in this particular instance, we are not looking for resistance. We're looking for our hand and our arm, pitching and, and uh, glove hand, to be coordinated in its speed and relaxation because your body is going to coordinate one side with the other. To enable you to utilize gravity, not fight against it, this would be fighting against it. Anything that takes my hand and throws it forward without allowing gravity to do its job is fighting against resistance. So when I'm doing my arm circle and coming off the pitching rubber and I get to my position here where I'm ready to deliver the ball, I want to employ that G flop, G for gravity, that G flop drill, and you should pay attention when you're doing that drill to feel what it feels like to allow gravity to take your hand through to the front side. Now I mentioned that 80 to 85% of the velocity that you attain is going to come from gravity. The other 15 to 20% is from what we call forearm fire. Something we'll talk about in later posts, but forearm fire is basically from the elbow to the wrist to the fingers. And when you get here with gravity, nice and relaxed. Now your forearm takes over, fires through the release zone, snapping your wrist and developing that extra power and speed that we need as windmill pitchers. I want you to visit the site often because we're going to have very good information for you and I hope that you have gotten a lot out of this latest post and I can't wait to speak to you again. Have a good night.